In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the Plastic Tools in Fusion 360's product design extension. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I want to dive into the plastic tools that were added into Fusion 360's product design extension. We've already talked about geometric pattern, and we've already taken a look at the volumetric lattice tool. But I want to focus on the new boss and snap fit tools, updates to rib and web, and also what it really means to have a plastic design. So we're going to get started by first talking a little bit about workflow. Uh, I'm going to change my units to inch. And then I want to begin by first creating a new component. Now, I'll explain why we're doing this. In this case, I'm going to call this new component housing. And as soon as we begin a plastic part design and we want to use tools like boss and snap fit, what we actually need to do is assign a rule similar to creating a sheet metal body. When we create a sheet metal body or component, what we're doing is we're providing a list of rules that the design needs to fit. So we're going to do the exact same thing for a plastic part design. We're going to say ABS.1. And we need to actually select the component. Even though it's currently selected and active, we'll select the component. Now if we expand it, you can see we've got this plastic rule. We can modify it if we wish. We can go into manage our plastic rules to create our own. We're not going to be talking about that here, but we do want to get into creating a design. The main reason that I created that component was so that the rule would be nested inside of it. So now we need to create some geometry that we can apply these tools to. We're going to do a very basic example looking at an ellipse, and we're simply going to create an ellipse and give it some dimensions. In this case, we'll go two inches, and I'll make this five inches, and we'll finish the sketch. I'm going to start with an extrude. I'm going to pull it up half an inch, set this to be symmetric, and I need to make sure that I do apply some draft. In this case, minus one degree will be fine. Notice that also, Fusion 360 now has this default dialog. That is not on every tool, but it is on several of the tools, including the ones that were added for boss and snap fits. Next, we're going to apply a fillet. I'm going to use F on the keyboard, and then I'm going to hold down Control to select this bottom edge. Notice that the dimension dialog specifies an NR, or nominal radius. When we're creating our plastic parts, we want to minimize the radius size on the plastic parts that intersect the inside. This is because we don't want to have a large volume of plastic and create sinks. But this is an external cosmetic feature, so I'm going to change the value to 0.25. From here, the next thing I want to do is expand my bodies. I'm going to go ahead and shell this out. Notice that it's automatically bringing in T, which is the inside thickness. We'll say OK. Then I'm going to use split. I'm going to select my body to split, and the tool is going to be my plane. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button, select X, Y, and say OK. This was a really quick run through of just creating a body that has a thin plastic wall. But you can see here now that we've got a bottom and we've got a top, both are thin wall. Now that we have these, we can begin setting up the references needed to apply these new tools. To begin, both the boss and the snap fit will need to have sketch points for center locations. So I'm going to begin a sketch on the top face. And I want to start by selecting offset. I'm going to offset this edge. And I'm going to say minus T, which is our thickness, divided by 2. Now, notice in this case, it's not actually allowing us to use that value. If I get rid of the minus and I get rid of the 2, you can see that it's not allowing it. So I'm going to manually enter a value of 0.05. I'm going to put a negative in front of it for right now and say OK. Sometimes with these dimensions, we can go back and we can add it after the fact. So if we say minus T, sometimes we can add those. In this case, it doesn't look like it wants to apply it. So we're going to carry on with the value that I applied. I'm going to hit X to turn that into construction. Then I'm going to go to create point. And I'm going to place a point over here. And I'm going to place one right around the middle. Then I'm going to place one for a screw boss. We'll finish the sketch. Then I'm going to hide the sketch temporarily. I want to create a new sketch on the bottom face, and once again, just place a sketch point. We want to see what the difference is between having a sketch point on the bottom face and having one on the top. 
I'm not going to go through it, but I will note that you do want to avoid placing them on the outside if you want to create a boss that goes between both of your solid bodies. Let's go ahead and bring Sketch 2 back, and let's focus our attention first on boss. Notice that it's telling me that it cannot create a fastener. Now, what happens with this new tool is it's actually going to allow us to insert the hardware, but in order to do that, it creates a fastener folder and it needs to be an external component. So I need to save this first. I'm just gonna call this one Plastic Design. And now that I have that saved, when I go in, it'll be able to create those external references. We're gonna begin first by selecting this point and notice instantly that we get a great preview on the screen. This is showing us a section view, the opacity's changed on our component, and it's very easy to tell what's going on. If we bring back body two, also note that we have an orange preview on the top, it's got a counter bore, and there's actually a screw going through it. We can manipulate everything on screen, we can move the position of these bosses, we can flip them to the other orientation, we can determine whether or not we want to increase the diameter. And all of these on-screen manipulators are extremely helpful. But when you're designing a plastic part, you need to be extremely careful with all of your values to make sure that they meet your requirements. So we can pick the hardware that we want, a very specific size, and determine all the different parameters. But one thing I will mention that is extremely important is that the advanced section for each of these is where your draft angle is hiding. So you can see here that some of them are already coming in with DA1, draft angle one, or for a single side. And you can see the expression value in this case is two degrees. You'll notice that D is not applied here. So you can see there's no DA1 or DA2, it's just zero degrees. And if you need to apply a draft here, you should go ahead and use these rules or these values, assuming that you set them up. So we're gonna apply that. Then I'm gonna go down to the advanced settings for side two. And notice again that some of these values don't have draft. If that's the design intent, that is perfectly fine. But I think it's a good idea to apply draft wherever possible, unless you have a very specific reason why you can't have a draft applied. We're gonna say okay, and note that we now have hardware that's been created. You can see here it's an external component and it's been placed inside of the housing. So this is a great way for us to create these references. Let's take a look at using that tool. This time we'll select the reference that's on the bottom inside of the housing. Once again, we wanna show both sides and we're gonna to go to a front view. Notice that this instantly gives us a pretty compressed situation. We can't actually have a screw. We can flip the direction, we can modify these values, but what we really need to do is we need to adjust the size between the two. The screw itself needs to be shorter if we want it to be in a blind hole. And then you can see we can get back to that situation where we're creating the representation or we're creating the boss at the correct size, even though the sketch point was on the inside of the housing and not the outside. I would suggest if you are designing a housing that you place those along that midline, that center line as your reference, and that'll help you get the initial size correct. Also note that if we go into advanced, that we don't have those draft angles applied. I'm just gonna say okay for this case, but just keep in mind that you will need to set up your defaults or you will have to work on whatever situation it is in case you're using like half a degree of draft or three degrees. Just make sure that you're very mindful of those. Let's go ahead and bring back this sketch and now let's take a look at SnapFit. So SnapFit also needs a sketch point relationship. You can see here that if I view this from the top, the orientation is based on our coordinate system and not the design that we're working on. So I'm gonna rotate this around until it's roughly even with the side. And notice that we have some control over the direction. And it's also a good idea that we do show both bodies. So when we flip it, you can see that the snap is actually in the bottom of the housing and the opening or the groove section is in the top of the housing. There are some important considerations that we need to be mindful of with this as well. You'll notice that there is not really a draft angle that we see here in the parameters. When we look through here, we have values for a corner radius. If we want to increase this, for example, we can set 0.05 and it'll round the groove section. But none of these are representing draft. 
So we need to be extremely careful when we use these tools and just be mindful of the fact that we should go back after the fact and add draft in. We do have some values, for example, the thickness at the base and the thickness here, so A and C. And you'll notice that these parameters are automatically defined, A being T1 divided by 2, and that thickness value, this ends up being 0.05. When we look at C, this transition depth also ends up being 0.05, which means there's absolutely no draft on it. This is in place, and these are the rules that are inside of that default ABS. So again, we should just be mindful of these values. I'm going to set the base to T1 instead of half, and you can see that it made it wider. And then at the very top, the width here is E. And this value D right now, you can see it's set at 0.2. I'm going to divide that by two, make it a little narrower, and you can see now we can sort of taper that in. It takes a little bit of work and time to set up the parameters that work well for your design, but just note that you do need to play around with these, and you have to decide if you're going to use a side pull or if you're going to have some sort of internal core that's going to allow you to get that geometry. Let's take a look one more time. This time I'm going to use one of the other type options, the perpendicular hook and groove. I'm going to select this. And again, I'm going to bring back the other body, make sure that we can see the preview on the screen, and note that this one goes all the way through the top. So this is a much easier situation since it's already in our pull direction. But once again, we need to be mindful of the fact that we don't really have a draft angle that we're applying to these bodies. So you can design them as is and then come back and do a little bit of work or manipulation. In this case, you'll note that it left this little bit of face here, which we can select and hit delete on the keyboard. Fusion's really good about the direct modeling and editing, and we can just pull that out. We could do the same thing with this one here. I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and select the face on the inside, and then hit delete and allow it to just open that hole up. So again, it's pretty quick for us to do. Now that we've seen a couple of those tools, let's make a quick sketch. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the top. I'm just gonna use some lines. I'm gonna draw a line here, and I'm gonna draw one from the center. Let's go ahead and bring that back right there. And I'm gonna say, okay. Then I wanna create another sketch. This time I'm gonna do this on the side. I'm gonna use my slice option to give me a temporary section view. Then project include and intersect. I wanna grab these faces and I'm just gonna create a line so I can create a rib here. So now that we have these two sketches, let's take a look at these two tools that have been around for a while but have received an update. So when we talk about rib, one of the things that has always been missing is draft. Now when we talk about rib, we have to select our pull direction and we can apply draft. One issue that I have with this tool is that by default, the thickness value is coming in the thickness of the housing. In general, when we add ribs for structure, if we're adding them to bosses or if we're adding them to the wall, that is not going to be an appropriate thickness. So I would want to see this multiplied by 0.6 or maybe 0.7. Also note that it's automatically adding fillets to the corner. That's not necessarily required. We can modify the fillet radius and we can simply say zero if we wish. But just note that that is now an option. We weren't able to apply a fillet before and we weren't able to do draft. So let's take a look at web and see if they've updated this as well. With web, you can see here that we do have some options and the first of which is going to be that thickness again. And I'm gonna start by simply multiplying that by 0.6. Next, we do also need to consider things like draft angle. One thing that we should be aware of is instead of pull direction, what we're actually going to do is determine whether or not the draft is coming from the bottom or from the top. If we're going from the top, you'll notice if we view this from the top that we're drafting outward towards the base. If we're coming from the bottom, then this value should probably be closer to say 0.75 and then we flip it so that we're drafting up. Again, these values are going to be specific to whatever you're designing, whether or not you have these requirements. And this is not an ideal plastic housing by any means. It's just sort of to show us that we do have these options now for things like applying draft and for adding them to ribs and webs. So now that we've kind of seen these tools and we kind of understand a little bit, let's take a look at the last thing that's been added, and this is design advice. 
We select our body, we select the pull direction, and we analyze. When we analyze, this is going to be based on the draft that's inside of our default rules, which is two degrees. So when we go through, we have this overview, and you can see here it's telling us that there are 58 regions that don't meet the minimum draft requirements. We can see all of those areas, and these are the ones where we maybe added one degree, or you'll notice with the snap fit sections that we didn't really apply draft because we have to go back after the fact and do it manually. But we can go into each section and we can take a look at things like areas of thin or thick material. We have a color bar display. We can modify that on the screen if we want to take a look at just certain areas. So that's really helpful in terms of display. If we have any undercuts, these are areas where we'll require a side pull. And if we know that some of these are not important, for example, this region here, we can use the ignore option to sort of prevent us from visualizing it. We have the draft, which we've already seen, and then we have these knife edges. In general, these are all things that we want to avoid. And I will say this, that I think that this design advice tool would be excellent if instead of just ignoring certain regions, we could reconfigure the draft pull direction. So for example, if there were undercuts, if we could simply say, well, there's an undercut, but this is pulled from this direction, analyze it based on that. That would be a wonderful addition to this design advice tool. So now that we've seen everything, my general impression is that I'm really impressed with the boss tool. The boss tool, being able to add the hardware in, create the boss on the upper and lower sections, that is a great addition to plastic part design, plastic part modeling. One thing that I would love to see added to it is the ability to automatically apply ribs at various locations around those screw bosses. Because what we're gonna have to do after the fact is we're gonna have to create sketches, potentially planes wherever these screw bosses are. So that way we can create a sketch that allows us to create those ribs. It's a lot of extra work and I think just configuring the tool to include those ribs because we're already gonna have a center location and orientation for everything here, I think it would be extremely helpful and it would add a little bit more value. The snap fit option, I would love to be able to see some additional tools in there to help better configure the draft angles. For pulls like this, we would have a side core or we would need to remove or extrude some geometry away from the bottom so that we could pull it from the bottom. But these tools and then some of the default values, for example, in the ABS plastic rule, using the thickness for ribs and webs instead of using something smaller, those kinds of things I, th I think need a little bit more attention. Now, you can obviously do it on your own. You can spend the time to create those, those different rules, but I think that just adding a little bit more functionality there would really help this tool perform better. Overall, I, I, like I said, I do think it's really impressive Modeling snap fits and modeling bosses are things that take a good bit of time. So simplifying that process is extremely handy. Whether or not it's worth the value to you to get the product design extension, I can't answer that. I think we've already looked at geometric pattern and we've already looked at volumetric lattice. And I think that the lattice is probably the best tool out of everything that was added so far. And I think the boss is a close second. I'm really happy that draft is now on rib and web. And I think these tools are really coming along. So that's my impression going through this the first time. If you have any questions, obviously leave them as comments in the video. If you've tried this out yourself or if you design plastic parts and you have some comments from what you've seen, again, please leave those as well. I want the feedback. I wanna make sure that we give Autodesk any sort of feedback on these tools possible so that they can improve them and continue to improve them. So for that, that's going to be the end of this video. I appreciate everybody watching. So thanks for that. And we'll see you in the next one.